Hello, this is Mr. Sullivan. I'm going to be going over the math lessons for Monday, May, for May 4th and Tuesday, May 5th. Ahora, uh, Mr. Sullivan, voy a revisar las lecciones para lunes 4 de mayo y martes 5 de mayo. Before we begin, let's take a quick look and remember what profits are. And we'll do, and vamos a hacer la misma cosa en español a ratito. Okay, profits. All right, the problem. Jim sold $1,400 worth of t-shirts. His cost totaled $600. How much were his profits? Who was involved here? Jim. What was involved? T-shirts and money. The first fact they give us is that Jim sold $1,400 worth of t-shirts. So that equals his sales. And then his toss cost totaled $600. So we have that. Now, we want to know what his profits are. So cost plus profits equals sales, or alternatively, sales less cost equals profits. And so this is how we're going to resolve it. Uh, we will take sales and then subtract costs, and that will give us profits. And that, in this case, that's $800. And the answer is Jim's profits were $800. Ahora, para ver la misma cosa en español, ¿cómo hacemos ganancia? El problema, Jim vendió $1,400 de camisetas. Su costo ascendió a $600. ¿Cuánto fueron sus ganancias? ¿Quién está involucrado, Jim? ¿Qué estamos hablando? Camisetas y dinero. El primer facto es que Jim vendió $1,400. Entonces, esos son sus ingresos. Uh, su costo ascendió a $600. Ok, y ya tiene, uh, queremos saber la ganancia. Gastos más ganancias igual a ingresos o alternativamente ingresos menos gastos es igual a ganancia. Y eso es lo que vamos a calcular. Vamos a tomar ingresos y restar gastos para calcular las ganancias. Resolviendo esto, 1,400 menos 600 son 800. Ok, entonces las ganancias son 800 y la oración de respuesta, ganancias de Jim eran 800 dólares. Okay, now we'll take a look at the lesson for Monday, uh, May 1st. Okay, we're looking at the concept of profits again. We've talked about this on Friday. All right, and so we have several practice problems, remembering that profit equals total income minus expenses. Uh, expenses may be various different numbers, so we, have, we may have to add them together. All right, and we're going to look at each of the problems that they've given us as examples. Okay, looking at problem number one. Heather bought an old wood book, wooden bookcase. She repaired it and put on a new coat of stain on it. When it was finished, she sold it to a neighbor. Heather had made the following, made the following list to cal help her calculate her profit. How much profit did Heather make? Write an answer using a complete sentence. Okay, so what we're going to do is we have the, we have the this is the price paid for the bookcase, and then we have the cost, uh, this is how much she paid for the bookcase, the cost to repair it, and the cost to put a new stain on the bookcase. So those are the costs. And then we have our selling price, which would be her sales. So we're going to we're going to work with this, and we're simply going to uh, you know draw our answer, draw draw our problem out, and then solve it. Okay. First thing we're going to do is write our answer statement. Okay. This is problem number one, and our answer statement is Heather. made a profit of blank dollars. Okay, and then we can also say Heather ganó blanco dollars. Okay, in our transaction. Okay, so now what we'll do is we're going to, we're, we're going to answer the questions. Okay, who is involved? Heather, what is involved is cost, sales, and profits. Okay, ¿quién está involucrado? Heather, ¿qué está involucrado? Uh, involucrado? Gastos, ventas, y ganancias. Okay, we're going to start with, uh, we have four things here we're going to put, so we have, that we're going to need. So we're going to put this here. Okay. First thing we have is the price paid. Second thing we have are the repairs. 
Okay. Third thing we have is the stain. And those all together will be the total costs. Entonces tenemos el precio que, que pagamos, la reparación y uh, el color que hemos, hemos puesto y van a sumar a ser costos totales. Ok, esos son los, los gastos totales. Ok, and then we have, the what's left will be profits. Or uh, lo que va a quedar son, es ganancia. Ok, and so we have here, our total is, we have $65 in sales. Que queremos ingresos o ventas de $165. The price that was paid for the bookcase, the precio que pagamos, $15. Okay, yeah, we have it here. So it's finished. sold to the neighbor. Heather made the following list. So we have cost to repair the book, bookcase was $7.50. El costo de reparación, $7.50. Okay, el color que ponemos, okay, ya $4.50, $4.50. And we want to know our profits. So the first thing we're going to calculate is the total costs. The second thing we're going to calculate is the profits. Okay, continue on. Then we do our, now we can move to our calculations. So we have $15 plus $7.50 plus $4.50. Zero plus zero plus zero is zero. Zero plus five plus five is 10. We regroup one. One plus five is six. Plus seven is 13. Plus four is 17. We regroup one. One plus one is two. So our costs are $27. Then what we're going to do, so we have our cost here, we have $27 total cost. So that's the first thing we calculated. Now we're going to calculate profits, and we do that by subtracting sales less total costs. Ahora vamos a calcular las, las, las ganancias por, por restar ventas menos gastos totales. Okay, and we keep our, our, when we're subtracting, we always keep our decimal points lined up. Zero minus zero is zero, zero minus zero is zero. We can't take, uh, we can't take seven from five, so we have to borrow, and we're going to regroup. This becomes a five, this becomes 15. So 10, one tens becomes 10 ones, 10 units, plus the five units we already have, that's 15 units. 15 minus seven is eight, five minus two is three, and so our profits are $38. And we will put that here. So our profits are here. We put it on a diagram. $38. And that is the answer to our uh, answer statement. So, uh, ya tomamos ventas menos gastos. Igual a eh, so 65 menos 27 son 37. Esa es la ganancia que ponemos aquí en nuestra oración de respuesta. Okay. And then we can come back to the problem we have here. I know blank, okay, which is $65, represents the money received, total income, and $27 represents the, act, the, the cost. So the answer is Jim's cost, uh, sorry, Heather's profits were $38. Heather's profits, okay? La ganancia de Heather, Heather, de Heather era 38 dólares. Okay, so that's problem number one. Okay, now we move on with problem number two. Jason mowed 15 lawns for $15 each. So we'll circle each of those. He spent $16.08 on fuel for his motor. And the question is, what was Jason's profit? Okay, so problem number two. First thing we're going to do is write our answer statement. All right? Jason's profit was, we have a dollar sign with a blank because we know it's in dollars. And so, la ganancia de Jason era blanco. Okay, first question we need to ask is, all right, who is involved? ¿Quién está involucrado? Jason. Okay, what's involved? Right, 
What is lawns? Cespedes. Okay, money, dinero. And fuel, gasolina. Okay, now what we have to do is we're giving, we have 15 laws for $25 each. So now we have to uh, figure out what the actual total revenues were, the sales. So we're going to draw a diagram for that. Be a multiplication problem. And we always, we always start off the same way with multiplication and division, right? So we have, this is total sales, total income. Es el ventas totales, ese va a ser un problema de multiplicación, right? We have, and aquí, here we have price per lawn. Aquí tenemos el, el, uh, el dinero que gana por, por césped. And these are the how many lawns he did, which is césped, cuánto céspedes, no? So we have 15 lawns, 15 céspedes, $25 each. So $25 cada uno. Okay, y vamos a calcular, okay, total income. Es, eh, vamos a, eh, we're going to calculate total income, and this is the first calculation we'll make. Second one we're going to make is now we have to figure out profits. And so we're going to make a block exactly the same size because this is this add, these are the same size. These this represent the same amount, and we have two here, and we have the costs, the gastos, which is fuel, gasolina, sixteen dollars and eight cents. This is eight dollars e ocho centavos. Yeah, here we have profits, ganancia, que vamos a calcular. Yes, yeah, so and this is the second thing we're going to calculate. So that's our second calculation that we're going to make. Okay, now moving forward. So what we're going to do uh, is we have to multiply 15 times 25. Now I'm going to show you two different ways that we can do this. All right, we have $25. We can use a standard algorithm. $25 times 15. 5 times 5. And I'll, be, I'll use a different color to make it a little bit easier to see what we're doing. 5 times 5 is 25. And we regroup the two, the 20. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 2 is 12 tens. Then we then we, we mark through that one, and we come over here. Now we're multiplying by 10, so we put our 0 here. And then it's 1 times 25. So we have 25. And we add them together. 5 plus 5, it, 5 plus 0 is 5. But 2 plus 5 is 7. 3 plus 2 is 75. So we have three, $375. Now, Looking at the same problem, uh, yeah, we can solve the same problem using the box method. If you prefer that, we're multiplying two digits times two digits. And here we have, so the $25 is 20 plus 5. The 15 is 10 plus 5. And we simply multiply what's in each of the boxes. So 1 times 2 is 2 plus two zeros, which each one represent 10. That's 200. 1 times 5 is 5. The zero we multiply times 10 to one time, so that's 50. 5 times 2 is 10 plus a, a zero multiplying by 10 again. And then 5 plus 5, 25. Now, if we add these together, we get, all right, uh, you know, do it in blue here just to make it a little bit easier to see what we're doing. So we're adding these two together. This becomes 250. Add these two together. That becomes 125. And we add those together, 5, 7, and 3. And we get 375, just like up above. You'll also notice that these two numbers are the same as these two numbers. So this feeds directly into the standard algorithm. Okay, taking that information, what we're going to do is we know that our sales were $375. So we're going to put that right here, $375. Now we have to figure out what our profit was. And so the profit, to calculate the profit, we have to subtract the 375 minus $16.08. So we have 375, and we have to put the cents, the, the two digits for the cents on here because we're going to be going into the cents here with $16.08. And so we're subtracting here, all right? So we can't take 8 from 0. Remember, we always subtract the lower number from the upper number. Siempre, siempre restamos, ok, ya tenemos ya la misma uh, la cantidad de ventas, y vamos a Gast, uh, vamos a restar uh, las, la gasolina, los gastos, 
Ok, no podemos tomar 8 de 0, entonces tenemos que regrupar. We have to regroup. So this becomes a 4, right? This, which makes, we make this a 10, a 4, uh, 1 unit is equal to 10 tenths. But we need to regroup again, so that becomes 9 tenths, and this becomes 10 hundredths, or 10 cents. 10 minus 8 is 2. 9 minus 0 is 9. We can't take 6 from 4, so we have to regroup again. This becomes 6. This becomes 14. 14 minus 6 is 8. 6 minus 1 is 5. 3 minus 0 is 3. So our answer is $358.92. And so this is what we go here, $358.92. We now have an answer next to each of our question marks in our, in our diagram. And so we know we have now completed the diagram, and now we can fill in the answer up here, $358.92, right, uh, $358.92. So now, uh, the, the amount received here is $375, okay, and uh, $16.08 represents the total expenses. So the answer is Jason's profit. was, okay, $358.92. And so that takes care of problem number two. Okay, now we'll look at problem number three. Callie purchased supplies and props for three photo booths. She received $78 in payment for each of the three photo booths. What was Callie's profit? So we have, uh, we have she received $78 in payments for each of the three photo booths. So we have three photo booths, right? And then we have the uh, then we have the prices paid for all supplies needed, props for all photo shoots, and the selling price for each photo shoot. So these two boxes here are our costs. So uh, we will begin again uh, by starting with our answer statement. The question, oh, the question we have is, what was Kelly's profit? Let me circle that. What was Kelly's profit? And so this is problem number three. We have Kelly's profit was blank. Uh -huh. Okay, la ganancia de Kelly. era. Ok, repetir en español, ok, Cali compró um, materias uh, y, y uh, cosas para tres, uh, tres veces de, de, de escenarios de foto, ¿no? Recibió 78 dólares en, pa en pago para cada uno de los trabajos de foto, de tres foto, trabajos de foto, ¿cuánto era su ganancia? Ok, entonces, we will continue on, ok, what is with, uh, first of all, who, quién está involucrado? Tenemos Cali. Ok. What is involved? ¿Qué, de, ¿Con qué estamos hablando? Ok. Ya es. Ok. We have price. Precio. Ok. Props. And supplies. Tenemos precio y las cosas que utiliza para generar el dinero. Ok. Primero tenemos que. Uh, we, first thing we have to do is calculate sales. Tenemos que calcular las ventas, los recursos, okay? So we'll do that. Now, three times 78, we can show as a multiplication problem or as an addition problem. In this case, I'm going to show it as an addition problem, all right? Uh, and so we have $78 each. And those three added together equal total revenues. Tenemos los tres eventos de fotos, entonces ya juntando estos, ya sumando estos, tenemos las ventas totales o ingresos totales. Then down here, we have supplies. And uh, profits. All right? So we have supplies, props, and pro so we have supplies. Props and profits. Those are our three parts. And these again are exactly, the dotted lines mean that those two things are exactly the same. All right. 
So we have supplies are $38.90. Entonces, aquí estamos con gastos y las ganancias, ok. Uh, props are $15.28. And we want, so the first thing we're going to calculate here is the revenues, that's number one. And the second thing we're going to calculate is the profits, number two. Okay, uh, no, sorry, we have to calculate total, total profit, total expenses here. So this is total costs. That will be question mark number two. And then this will be question mark number three. My apologies. Now, uh, so filling in what we have here. Uh, we have, so we have total cost. That's the first thing we're going to, the second thing we're going to calculate. So going up here, we'll start with the first calculation. We have 78, we can add 78 three times, or we can multiply 78 times three. I'm going to go ahead and multiply 78 times three. Three times eight is 24. Okay, regroup it to 20. Three times seven is 21, plus two is 23. So we have $234. $234 is the total revenues. Now we're going to, we have to uh, add these two together. So we have $38.90 and $15.28. Um, uh, $15 so aquí arriba ya sumamos, multiplicamos los tres eventos de 78 dólares. Llegamos a 234 dólares. Entonces, ingresos totales, 234. Ahora vamos a sumar los gastos. This is 11, 1, 9, 14, 1, and 5. $54.18. So we have, entonces los gastos totales son $54.18. Okay, entonces, now, uh, ahora tenemos los ingresos totales y los gastos totales. Right now we have total sales, uh, total revenues, and then total costs. And the difference between those will be profit. So we'll take... We take $234 minus $54.18. Right. We do this with different colors just to make it easier to see what we're doing. And we have, uh, and so we have, so we can't take eight, we can't take eight from zero. Remember, we always subtract the lower number from the upper number. So we have to regroup to accommodate it. So we get this four, this three units, the four units become three units. All right, one unit is equal to 10 tenths, right? But we need to borrow again from that, so that's going to become 9 tenths, and this will become 10 one hundredths, or 10 cents. 10 minus 8 is 2. 9 minus 1 is 8. We can't take 4 from 3, so we have to regroup again. This becomes a 2. This becomes uh, this become the tenths. This becomes 13 ones. 13 minus 4 is 9, all right? We can't take 5 from 2, so we have to regroup again. This becomes 12 minus 5 is 7. 1 minus 0 is 1. So we have $179.82. Entonces, lo que estamos, estamos restando y cada vez tenemos que regrupar para poder hacerlo. Ok, y llegamos con $179.82. And so the profit that goes here, $179.82. cents. So we now have an answer next to all three of our question marks. And so we know we've now completed the problem, $179.82. And now we can come back and figure out and fill in the blanks. So we know that $234 represents the money received, total income, and $54.18 represents the total cost, total expenses. And the answer is Kali's profit was $179.82. And that takes care of problem number three. Now moving on to problem number four. Kevin sold 30 burgers today for $6.50 each. Kevin vendió 30 hamburguesas hoy para $6.50 cada uno. The supplies to make the burgers cost Kevin $89.20. Entonces, la cosa que necesitaba para hacer los burgers, los, los, los hamburguesas, costó uh, $89.20. What was Kevin's profit? Well, entonces, ¿cuánto era la ganancia de Kevin? Entonces, we're going to go through and, and, and circle these. 30 burgers, or $6.50 each. 
Okay. Uh, the supplies were uh, supplies to make the burgers were $89.20. And the question is, which we circle, what was Kevin's profit? Okay, now, this is question number four. We're going to write our answer statement. Kevin's profit, profit was blank. Okay, la ganancia de Kevin. Era blank. Okay. First thing we look at is who's involved? Is Kevin? ¿Quién está involucrado? Kevin? What's involved? ¿De qué estamos hablando? Okay. In this case, it's burgers, hamburguesas. Okay. Price, precio. And supplies. Los costos necesarios para hacerlo. La mercancía. Okay. Entonces, primera cosa que tenemos que hacer es tenemos que calcular los ingresos. We, first thing we have to do is we have to calculate his income or his sales. And so we're going to draw a bar here to do that. And since it's a multiplication problem, we always have we always have we have various numbers of the same amount, so that makes it a multiplication problem. This is going to be our total sales. Which we're trying to calculate, so that's going to be our that's going to be our uh, question mark. That's going to be question mark number one, All right? We have uh, and we have the price per burger, que quiere precio por hamburguesa, okay? And the number of burgers, the uh, número de hamburguesas, okay? And what it tells us is we have uh, we have 30 burgers, tenemos 30 hamburguesas que vendieron por vendió por seis dólares en cincuenta centavos. Cada uno. Entonces, tenemos tres, 30 grupos de 300, de 6 dólares con 50 centavos. So, we have, we have 30 groups of 6 dollars and 50 cents. Okay, then what we'll do is we're going to take that same amount. And again, we're going to draw a dotted line here. Estos puntos quiere decir que es la misma cantidad. Right? And here we have, okay, our, los, los gast, uh, gastos. Okay, we have supplies, which is our costs. Supplies, okay, don't want to spell it right, okay, spell out supplies, and then we have what's remaining is our profits. Tenemos ya los costos y la, y la ganancia, okay, costs where it tells us were $89.20, los gastos eran $89.20, y queremos calcular la, 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 la ganancia, queremos cal we want to calculate the profits, and that's going to be our second question mark. Okay, moving forward with the calculation itself. All right, we have six dollars and fifty cents multiplied times thirty. Okay, so we have uh, we're going to multiply by the tens. So uh, the, so the tens place so we'll put our zero here. So that means we're multiplying by tens. Then we, three times zero is zero. Three times five is fifteen, and we regroup the one. Three times six is eighteen plus one is nineteen. So we have total sales of $195. So this is $195, right? And with two, two decimal places, right? And then, uh, then we have uh, our supplies, which are $89.20, and we have to subtract that from the sales. So we have, vamos a restar, okay, los gastos de los, los ingresos, okay? Okay, y... Here we have to, we're going to have to subtract, so I'll use different color. Zero minus zero is zero. We can't take two from zero, so we have to regroup. We're going to take one whole unit, and that becomes ten tenths. Ten minus two is eight. We can't take nine from four, so we're going to regroup. And this becomes eight tens, and one ten becomes ten whole units. So plus the four we have is fourteen. Fourteen minus nine is five. Eight minus eight is zero. One minus zero is one. So we have $105.80, and that equals our profit, $105.80. We'll put that here in our answer statement. Vamos a poner el resultado en nuestra oración de respuesta, and then we can fill this out. So I know blank represents the money received. So this is $195, all right? 
and blank represents the cost, the total expense, which is $89.20. And so Kevin's profit, like I not see that Kevin, was, okay, $105.80. And that takes care of problem number four. Okay, and now we'll move on to the lesson for Tuesday, the 5th of May. Vamos a continuar para la lección para martes, el 5 de mayo. Okay, uh, in this section we're looking at, okay, I can describe the basic purpose of financial institutions and the advantage and disadvantages of various savings options. Uh, it's best to describe El razón básico de instituciones financieras y las ventajas y desventajas de varias opciones para ahorrar. Ok, so, what is a financial institution? Ok, it's una institución financiera. It's a place such as a bank or credit union which provides financial services. E.g., it keeps money safe, it borrows money, and it lends money. Ese es un lugar como un banco o unión crediticio que, que provee servicios financieros Y quiere decir que uh, mantenga su, su dinero en un lugar ser, como seguro, ok, uh, uh, presta el dinero y, uh, y, y pre pide préstamo de otros. Ok, to borrow, to receive money from a financial institution or person with the intent of repaying the amount usually with interest. Ok, eso es pedir préstamo para recibir dinero de una institución financiera con el intento de repagar la cantidad normalmente con intereses. Ok, lend. This is to give money to a borrower with expectation of repayment. Prestar is para dar dinero a una persona con la, con la expectación de que le van a pagar otra vez. Okay, make a list of things you would save money for and sort them into two groups, short-term and long-term goals. Short-term, these items can be purchased quickly. Entonces, hay una lista de cosas que, para que puedes ahorrar dinero y, uh, y um, organizarles en dos grupos. Lo de corto plazo y largo plazo. Short term, corto plazo. These items can be purchased quickly. These uh, son cosas que se pueden comprar rápidamente. Long term, largo plazo. These items could take a while to purchase. These son cosas que toman tiempo para comprar. Okay, and so we have short term saving goals, long term saving goals. Metas de corto plazo, de ahorrar de corto plazo, metas de ahorrar por largo plazo. Okay, entonces, okay, what we'll look at or what are some of the things that you could put here? All right, so search them saying, so we have dinner, maybe school supplies. These are smaller purchases. These are all smaller purchases, right? Perhaps clothes and books. What are some long-term savings goals? Well, you a car. Most people don't have enough money to pay the entire price of a car all at one time. So they pay part of it and then uh, borrow the rest. Another thing you might have a long-term savings goal is, is to buy a house. All right. Once again, most people don't have all the money necessary to buy a house. So they save up their money to make what's called a down payment, which is a partial payment, and then they, uh, and they use that. Entonces ya estamos hablando de uh, cosas de largo plazo, comprar un auto, comprar una casa, okay, quizás muebles, okay, uh, furniture, okay, is another one. Because this is a very like can be a very large purchase, okay. De, puede orar para su para su educación. So you can look at your college education. So you can be saving money to pay for your future college education. This is what a lot of people, a lot of students save up money for, okay. And then you can do it like major appliances, okay. Uh, again, if you're remodeling or something, reply uh, ma major appliances. Sorry, forget my spelling here. Major appliances, que son uh, electrodomésticos, si está remodelando la casa. Okay, how could you save money for these items in your personal long term? ¿Cómo podrías ahorrar dinero por estas cosas que necesitan comprarse por el largo plazo? I can save money in a piggy bank or bank to purchase my long term item. ¿Puedo ahorrar dinero en uh, una caja en la casa o en un banco para, para comprar mis cosas de largo plazo? Well, you want to put it in a bank, all right? This is much more advantageous to put, put that money in a bank. Como, how could you save your money for these items even purchase in the short term? I can save money in a piggy bank or a bank to purchase my short term items. Again, the, the advantage is generally for a bank as well, 
ok, ya, aún por corto plazo ya es más beneficioso ponerlo en un banco. Ok, this up just a little bit. Ok, now, <clears throat> Mr. and Mrs. Troutman have been saving money for several years to purchase a new home. However, they do not have enough money to purchase one yet. How can a bank help the child to buy a new house? Well, if they've saved up enough, they can put, do what's called a down payment, which is a partial payment on the house, and then finance the rest with the bank, usually for a tenor of either 15 or 30 years, and usually at a fixed rate, although you can do it with, with a rate that changes over time. Uh, but uh, what you have here is, uh, so most people don't have the money they need uh, to pay for a house in cash. So what they do is they, they put down part of the price, uh, and then borrow the rest, and then that becomes their mortgage. And so they pay that mortgage uh, monthly and equals payments for the length of the loan. As I said, either 15 or typically 15 or 30 years. Number two, William has saved has $125 saved from doing extra chores and jobs around the house. His mom takes him to the bank to open a savings account. What are some advantages to keeping his money in the bank rather than in his home? Uh, there are several advantages. Number one, in a bank, the money is safe. Okay, it's guaranteed by the federal government. Uh, and so uh, if anything happens to the bank, William can still get his money out. Uh, even if the bank is robbed, that won't affect William. He will, uh, the, the, that'll be the bank's problem, but the bank will still have William's money when he wants it. Uh, so uh, that's one major advantage. Another major advantage is if you're saving money, it's easy to save it if it's not very accessible. Okay. Uh, es más fácil ya ahorrar dinero si no tienes muy buen acceso al dinero. Ok, ya. Yeah. Si le pones el dinero en el banco, pues ya eh, lo que tienes es eh, el dinero más seguro porque está garantizado por el gobierno federal. Ok, eh, eh, y así no es tan fácil tomar dinero y gastarlo. Entonces, esas son ventajas y desventajas. Ok, it says challenge. Make a T-chart label advantages and disadvantages. List the advantages and disadvantages of saving money using a financial institution versus just keeping it at home, such as hiding it under a bed. Okay, so this would look like this. so that, that chart would look something like this. This paper's here. Now, center. Okay, there. So what we have is a chart like this. We would have advantages, ventajas, disadvantages, desventajas. Okay, financial institution, institución financiera. And then uh, keeping it at home, Manten mantener. El dinero en la casa. Now, looking at this, what can we say? Well, for one, though, one of the advantages of financial institution, one definite one is safety. Right? That's a disadvantage for money. The money can for, for and the money at home can be stolen. Even if someone comes in and robs, uh, said, se, se, yeah, una ventaja en la seguridad del dinero, porque el dinero puede estar robado en la casa. Even if the bank is robbed, the, the, your money is guaranteed by the federal government. So you will still get, your money is still safe. Aunque roban el banco, ya yeah, el dinero está garantizado por el gobierno federal, entonces todavía tiene su dinero. Okay. Uh, another advantage, okay, you, is if you put it into the right kind of account, it can earn interest. Right. Uh, eso quiere decir que ya la cantidad de dinero puede aumentarse por uh, ganar intereses. So by earning interest, your, your, your money grows uh, while it's in the bank. Uh, there, so there is, so a disadvantage of keeping it home is there is no interest. No hay intereses. So if you put it, if you put it in the, under the mattress, it doesn't change. The amount doesn't change. One of the advantages of institution is the money is harder to access. Si el dinero está en el banco, es más difícil tomar acceso al dinero. Entonces, lo pone más difícil gastarlo. Okay. 
Now that can also be a disadvantage that it's harder to access. It's not quite as convenient. Okay, yeah. El, el, el poder de uh, tomar acceso ya puede ser una desventaja también porque no es tan conveniente. Okay. Uh, advantages uh, of having it at home, it is definitely easier to access. But related to the, is it, en la casa es más fácil tomar acceso, but también es más fácil gastarlo. It's easier to spend. So if you're trying to save money, you don't want to make it easy to spend it. <coughs> si está gastando, si quiere ahorrar dinero, no quiere ponerle uh, fácil de gastarlo. And so that is the summary for the lesson for Tuesday, the 5th of May. And so it's uh, in lección para uh, martes el 5 de mayo.